Hey guys, this is Jason Grimm, an architect on the OpenStack Private Cloud team. And uh, today I'm showing you uh, some sizing tools that I put together. Um, this is a, a calculator that I've been working on um, on and off over the years and, and kind of improving. Uh, it's mainly just for sizing uh, only. It does some light uh, uh, cost analysis and things like that too, but primarily it's um, it's, it's for sizing. Everything here in this uh, kind of brown field, these are all comments uh, or instructions. Um, so essentially what you do is you just paste your instance detail uh, into this into this pane here. Everything in the yellow is, is uh, fields that are intended to be edited. Um, so in this case, uh, the customer gave us their actual export from AWS uh, with all the instance names, uh, CPU, count, RAM, uh, root disk size, uh, sender or EBS size, and, and everything is set to a quantity of one here. I'll show you in a few minutes how you can put in just a flavor type, three or four flavor types, and then put quantities, and it will actually uh, still work. It, it will expand and calculate all that as well. Um, starting on the right-hand side, optionally, you can add or, or set um, a few other variables. Estimated utilization, uh, setting it to 1 here, setting it to 100%. Um, if you wanted to set utilization to, say, 80% or 50%, or they, they knew they were un underutilized, you could, you could change this to uh, a different value. Month over month growth rate, um, like in the example here, 1.05 sets this to a 5% month over month growth rate. And I'll show you in, in the bottom how it uh, uh, calculates how much, uh, how long the environment will last uh, based on a, a growth rate um, given a, a starting size of uh, the initial environment size. Um, you can also set a padding here. So setting this to 1.2 adds 20% to the, the total size of the environment uh, sizing. Um, again, everything is in gray is, is calculated for you, so you should largely disregard that and just use reference material. Um, this is just summing up all of the data that was given to the left. Um, it takes space images and, and volumes and gives you a total amount there. The IOs per VM, uh, there's a field further down where you can actually set to, if, uh, if someone knows that they have to have uh, 25 or 50 or 5 or 10 IOs per VM, um, you can set that and it will size based on that as well. Um, this first section is for the controller build. Um, these uh, drop downs are based on this inputs tab uh, that I generally leave hidden, but if you want to uh, see where the source data is coming from, it's over here on the inputs tab. So the, the chassis type for the controller is set here. Uh, the count's always going to be the three. Um, they need to make that dynamic. Uh, CPU model. Um, so there's a there's a bunch of CPUs to to choose from, and where this is coming from is the uh, the UCS documentation. I've, I've basically just taken the um, CPU table out of that uh, and grabbed the Model numbers, uh, you know, core count, gigahertz, cache size, uh, bus speeds, uh, uh, maximum RAM DIMM speeds, and all that um, in this dropdown. So you can edit that there. Uh, CPUs for nodes going to be two. Um, since I was grabbing the other variables, I went ahead and grabbed DIMM speed and, and power consumption too. Uh, something that's important to um, you know customers for for specifically for dense footprints. Um, RAM per node, you'll see that the, the numbers are off by 2, so instead of 192 or 256 or 384, um, this is because the, I have reserved 2 gigs for the host OS. Um, you'll never really, we don't oversubscribe RAM, um, so this prevents you from counting a 128 gig server saying that it can fit two 64 gig instances, which it can't. It can only fit one, then you have to fit other stuff on top of it. Um, I thought it was pretty cool on the memory lookup table that I got uh, from the Cisco documentation that tells you um, optimal, uh, optimal DIMM uh, size and counts to get the best uh, performance on, uh, on speed. So actually it will give you a recommended configuration of that memory that will help uh, probably your, uh, if you make a bomb or, or one of the sales guys makes a bomb, it helps them uh, pick what they need to uh, uh, use for that. Um, the ephemeral, I just took the standard here, so uh, these are the controller nodes again, they're always going to be ephemeral. 
Uh, I did 4x480s at RAID 10, uh, four discs, and a little bit of data here that tells you how many IOPS per disc, um, and your read and write penalties, and raw IOs. Um, now on the controllers it probably doesn't matter much, this is more for calculating on the, on the hypervisors, but I had the data there so I put it in uh, anyway, but you'll see that um, if you change the read-write ratio, um, your aggregate IOs go up because you've got two two IOs uh, of write for every one IO of read. Um, and then you've got a total capacity, and there's some calculations here. It takes, um, you know, 98, it takes a, a percent and a half off for file system overhead, uh, and then it calculates uh, how much data, how much usable capacity is there based on rate type and all that stuff. Uh, hypervisor build, much of the same information, a uh, little bit more info on how many cores and things like that. Uh, you can set hyperthreading on and off. Uh, the big thing here is you can you can set over subscription ratios. Um, gen general rule of thumb is two, you know, uh, two to one for prod and four to one for dev. Uh, you can you can tweak this uh, number as well. Um, Give you a total amount of BCPUs based on you know, CPU type and, and all that, so you can see if you change this to, uh, you know, the 2640 core that we use sometimes uh, updates all that data automatically for you. Same with the, uh, same with the RAM, bump this down. You see it automatically uh, um, updates how many DIMMs and uh, uh, what size and counts and all that stuff. And this configuration we're going to use, uh, I happen to know that this, um, uh, build is is uh, capacity, um, or it has a high requirement for disk capacity, not not disk IOP so much. Um, so I, I selected six gig drives, um, ten of those in the SEF configuration. Uh, for SEF, it's always going to be JBOD, and uh, you set your set your values here. Now that the the real um, value or the, the you know the real point of the sizing is to look at this data here, which says that. Based on um, CPU alone, looking only at CPU, uh, if you if you total if you took this build of hypervisor um, and you basically looked at just CPU metric and 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 line that up, you'll it would take 28 CPUs. Um, same with RAM, um, disk, and IOs per second. So looking at this, we we see that there our driving sizing factor is RAM. Um, so if we come back up here and change this to uh, 510 gigs per node, you'll see our, our uh, RAM is, is still the, the tallest uh, pole in the tent, so to speak. So that's our that's what we're sizing for. But essentially, the, the point of this is you you turn all the knobs, um, you know, playing with disk capacity, disk I/O, uh, vCPU, processor type, um, things like that. So like for for instance, we went down to that eight-core processor. Um, Essentially, that's not the that's not the driving factor. So it wouldn't matter if we went up to a 12 core processor. All that's really adding is is cost to the model because um, you know now we only need 19 required by CPU, but it doesn't matter. We still need we still need uh, 30 according to RAM. So uh, it allows you to kind of turn those knobs up and down. Um, this uh, this capacity analysis just spits out a a report of um, you know the total environment size, and then uh, down here it's kind of nice to have your your IOs per VM and your consolidation ratio. Um, this tells you that based on um, this build, that we're gonna on day one we will have consumed this many resources and uh, on a, a growth rate of one percent, we're only gonna in two months we're gonna have to upgrade that environment. So we may want to come up here and um, add some more capacity to that, um, and then that should give us a little more headroom uh, for for growth. So that gives us now 20, uh, 20 months of, of growth in that chassis. Um, this next part is the uh, adding kind of the components. Um, so the, the one-time fees, uh, installation cost, training cost. And now this doesn't create a bomb or a quote or anything. This is really, I'll show you in the summary tab. Um, this will spit out in a format that is easy to mail to, uh, or that emails automatically to a, a, a salesperson that you're working with. Um, so that they can make a budgetary quote uh, off of it. So um, standard, you know, fees for um, subscription fees and and uh, staff management fees. This uh, particular customer, we were looking at a, a colo situation, so I have the uh, hosting fees in there as well. 
Um, this sums up the software. Uh, this pulls the controllers and hypervisor accounts from above. I don't have any of the um, Metapod and the, the, the Nexus or the ASRs in there. Um, and this sums up those numbers um, according to hardware device costs and, and total costs. Um, I'll jump over to the summary uh, section for a little bit. And what you're, what you're seeing here is a, just a, a breakdown, more for reference, um, of all the volume or all the EC2 sizes and counts and volume sizes. Um, Again, this is most of the other data just in a more readable format. Environment totals. Um, uh, the estimate of, and, and this is going to be a little bit custom each time. Um, right now, this just this totals up all of the sizes, EC2 sizes, and the um, uh, list prices for those, and and calculates the price off of that. And same with the EBS. Um, this always comes in a little bit low uh, because we don't. You know, there's generally a, a pretty big amount of the AWS bill that is uh, based on transfer charges and S3 and Mongo and um, and Amazon support and things like that. So you can opt to add a um, percentage increase on that to get a, a estimated bill. Um, this tells you that the um, utilization of from the other tab where we, where we said it's 100% of uh, utilization, 0% growth rate and um, 120 percent padding for that. Um, this spits out um, the information about the controllers grabbed from the other tab. Same with hypervisors. Uh, just build information. And um, here's where it does a capacity comparison. So, you know, our four main driving blocks: vCPU memory, uh, total storage, and IOs per second. What's required? What's provided? A difference uh, based on number and a difference on percent. Um, so you see. Uh, the the it's important to call out that it's not it's not just the the cost that's a driving factor, but uh, even if the cost comes in uh, around the same, you're looking at uh, much more capacity that's given in the in the dedicated model. Um, and this is another view of some of the other data. And down here, this is the kind of four options that we talked with them about, which is a uh, local software only. Um, Control compute and data plane, uh, local, uh, or it's essentially the um, software gateway or, or hardware gateway model. And this is our uh, controlling the layer two and layer three as well, and then a hosted option. Um, a breakout of the fees, so one-time fees, hardware costs, um, you know, control and compute costs, data costs, uh, then a spin comparison uh, based on their the current of course going to be at zero percent. Um, and then we looked at, uh, I costed out the local software only and uh, local hardware only, and then a little chart for them to, to look at there. Um, the last thing I put in the other day, just because I was tired of um, hitting save all the time, and uh, it's going there. So, let's see, it's my OCD. Let me just put that there. <laughs> um, oopsie. So the uh, I needed to grab these paths and and uh, wrote a quick macro to just uh, save that as PDF and send an email, which is it's doing in the background. And I'll show that in a second that comes in. Um, wanted to to show you this hypervisors tab and, and tell you essentially what it's doing. There's this um, similar to this over here where I'm I'm evaluating. Uh, uh, that was my email coming in, um, where I'm evaluating. Um, that you know what the what the driving factor is. If you if you've heard of this, it's called a stock cut issue. And the the problem um, with sizing, or, or maybe the challenge with sizing, is that if you sum everything up, um, you know, in a in a you know, if you owned a lumber yard and you had ten four foot boards, ten eight foot boards, and ten sixteen foot boards, so you had two hundred eighty feet total, um, but you get an order um, for ten foot boards and you know, you want to know how many 10 foot boards you can sell. Well, if you sum everything up and divide, it says you can sell 28, but in fact, you can only uh, sell 10 um, because of the size. Because the, this, uh, you've got wasted white space on, on this, and these are just too short. Um, same kind of thing with sizing hypervisors. So, if you had uh, 20 hypervisors at 20 vCPU each um, and 192 gigs of RAM and a, a terabyte of disk, you get these these aggregate numbers. 
And if you looked at them individually, um, or just a, as a sum and divided, uh, you know, looking at CPU says you can fit actually uh, 55 on there, when in fact only 40 uh, will fit. And looking at RAM, if you sum it up, it says you have, uh, 30 will fit, uh, and in fact only 20 will because of the white space. So um, I made this this section here, which basically to double check uh, things like that, if you go and hit uh, import, it's funny, I gotta change that to a rounded number. <laughs> There's not 0.16 instances. Um, goes through and imports all of the all of the machines. And then when you do an assign, what it does is um, it starts creating, it goes through a loop and creates an array and uh, creates a hypervisor of the size that you specified and starts adding uh, machines to it. And every time it adds a machine to it, so it, cre it created this hypervisor, it starts adding machines to it. And every time it adds, it decrements uh, from that machine. And when it can't fit anymore, it creates a new one and starts adding uh, machines to that. But what it does every time is it, t it tries to add, it, it keeps going back up to the top one and tries to fill in the white space um, that's there. So it's basically kind of a right sizing. Um, so you'll see these are, it, it created it created hypervisor four. Um, and when this machine came along, it tried it on hypervisor one, hypervisor two, and actually fit on some white space on hypervisor three. Um, the next one was too big to fit on that white space, uh, so I put it back on four. Um, so it essentially is a sanity check for, um, for for the stock cut issue to make sure everything actually does indeed fit. Um, and I guess the last thing though, so it sends you this uh, nice little PDF and uh, of all of the outputs. And that's it. That is my ten thousand uh, dollar hammer. I hope you like it. It's uh, fun to write, and um, that's it. Mm. I stopped the recording.